Yes, Neil Robertson and Mark Allen are two of the most potent snooker players in the modern game. And that first round match is the main attraction in tonight's highlights from the BGC Masters at Alexandra Palace. But we start with a recap of what happened this afternoon in a clash between two former title holders, John Higgins and Matthew Stevens. Sadly for Matthew, his first appearance at the Masters in five years is a disappointing one as he exits in round one. But John Higgins is through to the quarterfinals for the first time in three years, winning by six frames to two. John Higgins, well done, thank you. When I do get by the first round, I managed to get the semis a final win it or something. So it's a big, a big win, I suppose, because I've lost in about ten first rounds. So no, good to win. And John Higgins will play either Ali Carter or Graham Dot in Thursday's quarterfinal. Time now to concentrate on Neil Robertson against Mark Allen. And for Mark Allen, this is an important tournament to build on what was an impressive performance at the UK Championship last month when he finished runner-up despite becoming embroiled in a war of words with snooker supremo Barry Hearn, a situation which has mellowed of late. I suppose if you read the headlines with settler differences, but... Uh, Still a few areas that I'd still not be happy with, but you no, know, we've chatted about it and you know, we've got things off our chest, both of us, and we'll just move on from it now. You know, there's going to be things that Barry does that I don't agree with, as many other players won't agree with, but uh, we're just going to have to get on with it and play snooker. The way I'm going to work is not going to appeal to everybody. I have to take a view for the sport. Every individual, whether it's Mark Allen, Ronnie O'Sullivan, will take a view for themselves. How does this affect me? Well, I can't have that. I've got to look on what is going to take this sport to the global of snooker that I believe it can become. And I think I know the way through. But to do that, we've got to be innovative. We've got to be creative. We've got to take some risks. And they can come with us screaming, or they can go back to the billiard halls and eke out a living globally. Snooker will be one of the fastest exploding sports in the world for the next few years. This tournament should be good. Obviously the venue looks very, very good out there and the ticket sales have been good so the crowd should create a good atmosphere and obviously playing Neil, he's one of the best players in the world at the moment and probably one of the foreign players of this season. It's going to be tough but I beat him in the second round here last year so hopefully I can look back on that match and use it to my advantage in the next match. Well, this promised to be a high-quality encounter between two terrific break builders, and they share the first two frames. The Australian took the opener with a break of 74, before Allen struck back in the second with a break of 88. We'll join it in frame three. Allen at the table, leading by five points. Dennis Taylor and John Parrott are your commentators. Yes, position's very tricky at the moment. One. Blue doesn't go in the middle, pink doesn't go in the other one, I don't think. He's having a look now, but, well, he's put his hand up to say sorry to Neil because it does go. And he didn't play anywhere near there, so if he can negotiate this pink, he'll have had a good bit of fortune there. Yeah, I'd like to make a 60 break and then hold my hand up and say sorry. <laughs> Seven. But it's finished a bit awkward for him, hasn't it? He'd like to take that one again. Maybe he was feeling a little bit sorry for Neil Robertson having fluked the position on the pink, but you've got to take advantage when you get a little bit of good run because you get enough bad run at this game. I don't think there's that much of a problem to knock this red in, but of course, where's the next ball coming from? Although, looking at the way this is, it's still a bit of tri a tricky one. Well, possibility of the blue. Not ideal for either pocket, really. Centre or top, so... Still work to be done. That's well done. Red next to the pink is potable. 13.
looks like he can clip the one in the centre as well, so this is a good chance now. Thank you. Yeah, this was the shot we were talking about. He's uh, flicked the other red unintentionally, but look how he found. That's what we call in the game a little Brucey bonus. Yes, he's keeping this break going here, Mark. He hasn't really got the cue Late. ball yet. Just slightly out of position with each shot, but to his credit, he's managing to wheedle another ball on. Keep going. If the pink goes in the corner, this isn't bad. And as you can see, it does so. Lovely. 20. Now he can take the red, blocking the black spot, and the black might go in the same pocket. And he'd 26. have very little to do to get on his next red, so this could open things right up in the next two shots. 27. sure he left enough angle on this red to get nicely onto the black again so he's on his way in this third frame is Mark Allen thirty five very little being missed so far this evening both players look to be on the top of their form Very compact player, isn't he, John? His Q action, you know, he's not the tallest player in the game, uh, Mark. He's probably around about 5'7, five, 5'8, five, but very compact style. He just looks 51. so comfortable on the shot, doesn't he? Yes, there's certainly more than one way to do it. We saw Sean Murphy's Q action last night was a bit more long and flowing than that, but Mark's, as you say, more compact. But listen. The object of the exercise is to knock the balls in the hole. And he does it very well. There's no two players alike. 58. And it certainly works for him. Yeah, it's all about getting the cue action like a piston. If you set a piston up at the table, it would pot the ball 10 times out of 10. And when you line it up, that's what you're looking for, is to deliver the line. And it doesn't matter how you do it. Virtually safe. Need Robertson 65. already requiring a snooker. Sixty-six. Yes, deliberately trying to leave himself off straight on the pink so he can cannon the reds out. Great touch. He does look brimful of confidence, Mark Allen, this evening. 73. 
Made 31 centuries last season. He's already made 22 this season. <coughs> of course, with having these PTC events, the century breaks uh, are becoming more common. Yes, as indeed are the maximums, then I said, but eight already this. Some achievement. If this goes in, you'd think he'd be guaranteed the century. 89. I think he thought he'd missed that because uh, I also thought it hit the cushion and then it seemed to uh, just turn back into the pocket. Played. Let's have a look at this again. Touch the cushion. 96. Still went in. 97. We've already had five centuries and we're in day three. <laughs> That's the 134th century of Mark Allen's illustrious career. 106. I say illustrious, he's got everything, only a major title, but it's only a matter of time you'd feel when you can play like this. Can't make the highest break here. Held by Sean Murphy, 139 last night, but nevertheless, this is great stuff. 124. 120. Just a little. <laughs> well, that's one way of getting the rubber for seven. Well, well, the standard we're seeing here this evening. It only takes one chance, and the player's winning the frame, and that was a fabulous 124 break. He now leads 2 1.